What do Connecticut law, medieval document signing, Star Trek, and romance in general all have in common? Okay, I suppose the answer is obvious, given you read the title of this video. They are united by the presence of kissing. Oh, how romantic. Don't worry, today's video will be more disconcerting than cute and cuddly. Science and some numbers will help us with this. It's amazing how easily these two can turn anything into creepy facts. And kiss is certainly no exception. It's such a sensitive, intimate topic. When you hug someone you like, then hold them close to you, close your eyes and... Wait, why in fact do people kiss with their eyes closed? You probably know the answer. At such a close distance from the face, the eyes are unable to focus. The picture is greatly distorted and does seem a bit off. Also, due to this lack of focus, the eyes might actually start to hurt, so the people kissing close them. This explanation was quite popular 10 years ago, and there's definitely something to this for sure. But the real reason actually isn't a person's sight. It's the strong emotions that are to blame. Maybe someone thinks that during a kiss, it's necessary to close your eyes, but for the most part, it happens reflexively. In such a way, the person unconsciously protects his or her brain from overload and the body from danger. The fact is that during a kiss, there is a strong emotional outburst. So not only can you restrain it somehow, but you can even switch off an overwhelming influx of feelings. Yes, a person is technically able to lose consciousness from the intensity of passion during a kiss. The author of this dramatic statement is unknown, but such an explanation can be found on the internet. And, oddly enough, most of it is not that far from the truth. It's just that romantics express themselves through kisses, but scientists have a completely different way of doing things. Following the scientific approach, it's impossible to immediately answer the question of why do people kiss with their eyes closed? First, you need to understand why we do this at all. And here's the first important fact. It's not just people who do this. Our distant relatives, the chimpanzees and bonobos, also kiss. This is the scientific definition of this phenomenon. Kissing is just part of the mating behavior coded in our genes, and romance has absolutely nothing to do with it. Like a peacock that, from birth, knows that for the mating games he needs to fluff his tail. People have their own relevant information about the appropriate behavior for such. Furthermore, scientists explain the significance of kissing for humans as a biological species. And since we're on the topic of mating behavior, then naturally we ultimately mean reproduction. And it's here as well that you have a difference between romance and science. No lovemaking. In everyday conversation, we might hear about pheromones or about the fact that a couple has good chemistry. It really does happen. But don't be upset by the fact that in the end, we are still animals, biologically speaking. Our brain is able to receive information from other people that is never processed consciously. For example, we catch human scent molecules. It's not like these are spirits or anything. Depending on what the brain detects among these molecules, it will decide on a course of action with the potential partner. Humans have a group of genes called the major histocompatibility complex. These are involved with the immune system and give each person their own unique natural scent. By the word compatibility, it should be clear that we also have a list of parameters to check. It's kind of like a job interview. In order to understand whether a partner is right for you, you need to smell them properly. But we're not dogs, our sense of smell is much weaker, so kissing appeared within human mating behavior. It's close enough for the brain to acquire the information it needs. But not always. And it's not in all cultures that the practice of kissing on the lips existed, let alone the exchange of saliva. We'll come back to this unromantic description of kissing later. Throughout the entire history of mankind, only 46% of cultures practice romantic, intimate kissing. The rest, as mating games of sort, rubbed their faces or noses. In the ancient Vedic texts, the kiss is spoken of as the inhalation of each other's soul. Such romance. There is also evidence that the more complex a society and culture are, the more often romantic, intimate kissing occurs in them. So then our craving for kisses is not only due to our animal instinct and genes, but also from our psychological attraction as well? Scientists lean more towards the idea that for modern people, a kiss is a combination of both factors. Generally speaking, they don't know for sure why mankind needs kisses, nor what their function really is. Perhaps a little bit of everything, but no one can say for sure. Still, researchers are absolutely confident in numbers that can be measured. So during a French kiss between partners, we have the following. 9 milliliters of liquid, 0.71 milligrams of fat, as well as 0.45 milligrams of sodium chloride or salt, 0.18 milligrams of other organic compounds, and 0.7 milligrams of protein. And then there's the crowning point of the kiss. 
the transfer of anywhere between 10 million to 1 billion bacteria to said partner. Yes, the description sounds rather unpleasant, as does the phrase saliva exchange. But studies have shown that disgust subsides when sexual arousal is at play. So the brain pushes us to a more detailed biological exploration of our partner. So where's the answer to the question we started with? Why do most people prefer kissing with their eyes closed? And by the way, there is evidence that not everyone does this either. About 34% of people look at their partner during a kiss. In 2016, Sandra Murphy and Polly Dalton, scientists from the University of London, published the results of a study they conducted. It had nothing to do with the study of kissing, but many experts found in it the answer to our question. Murphy and Dalton conducted an experiment that might seem strange at first. The subjects looked at the screen where letters appeared. Their task was to note the appearance of X and N. At the same time, one of the hands of the participants in the experiment was periodically hit with a slight vibration, and they had to report when they noticed it. When they see the desired letter, they react, and when they feel the vibration, same thing. Gradually, the images changed faster and faster, and the sequence of characters became more confusing. And the more difficult the task with the letters turned out to be, the less people noticed the vibrations. These results suggest that the more complex visual information is that enters the brain, the more it concentrates on it. As a consequence of this, other sensations weaken. If you perceive a lot of visual stimuli, you are less likely to notice touch. Here's where we find our answer. Kissing is a tactile process, and the brain needs to focus on it. If the eyes keep transmitting information about a terribly distorted human face, it's unlikely to work well. Additionally, the brain has to pay an unnatural amount of attention to the sensations from the lips, and these are very small compared to other parts of the body. So the explanation regarding an overabundance of feelings is partially correct. With open eyes, an overload of the system does happen, especially when you consider what's happening with the body of the kisser in general. At this point, dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin are all released in the body. These are our happiness hormones. They activate the pleasure centers in our brains. But there are interesting nuances, or rather observations, at play. Dopamine affects the same area of the brain as heroin and cocaine. Oxytocin causes feelings of love and affection because it is this one that is released in a woman during breastfeeding. And the presence of serotonin causes a mental state similar to obsessive compulsive disorder. This is when the thought that has arisen and the desire to do something is so obsessive that the person is forced to act on it. Now you understand why one great kiss can drive you crazy for such a long time. Scientists have already proven that concentrating the brain on a complex visual task makes auditory and visual stimuli less noticeable. An experiment conducted by London scientists confirms that this effect also influences the sense of touch. Dr. Murphy tactfully points out that their research was not done to unravel the mystery of kissing. Some modern systems in cars and aircraft use tactile sensations as a warning. For example, drivers feel vibration when the car begins to drift in the lane. So the study is more about the dangers of conducting difficult tasks while driving than kissing with your eyes closed. But the concept fits. Mating games are definitely a more positive subject than accidents. And yet kissing is needed not only in the selection of a partner for procreation, they also have great social and psychological importance. Still, remember how medieval documents, Connecticut laws, and Star Trek are all somehow connected with our topic? So there were some dark times in history when people already knew how to read and write, but not all of them. When an illiterate person in the Middle Ages had to sign something, he put a cross. And if he also wanted to emphasize the sincerity of his intentions, he kissed the place of his signature. Surprisingly, even medieval peasants had more freedom than some individuals of modern times within the US. In the city of Hartford, Connecticut, for example, husbands are forbidden to kiss their wives on Sundays. Colorado's Logan County imposed a ban on kissing sleeping women. In Indiana, some real discrimination befell men with mustaches. They are forbidden to kiss human beings at all. As for the Star Trek series, there's a story about some infringement of a different kind. In one of the old 1966 episodes, Lieutenant Uhura kissed Captain Kirk. What's so special here? William Shatner and black Nichelle Nichols became the first interracial couple whose kiss was shown on television. Now, it may sound wild, but in the year 1966, things were like this. Sure, you can talk a lot about kissing, but it's better to practice it. On average, each person spends 336 hours of their lifetime doing this. This is a very short time, only two weeks, especially considering that people spend 15 to 30 years sleeping, depending on their lifespan. So perhaps you should kiss more, since it's also useful. The previously mentioned hordes of bacteria even stimulate the immune system. But this isn't really the point. There's something more important. 
Back in the 80s, a 10-year study was conducted over in Germany. It turned out that men who kissed their wives before leaving for work earned about 20 to 30 percent more, but most importantly, they lived an average of five years longer. Their happy wives probably did too. As for the wives, there's another small bonus. A minute-long kiss burns up to 26 calories. In 2013, Ekichai and Laksana Taranarat, a couple from Thailand, burned more than 90,000 calories at a time. Their kiss got into the Guinness Book of World Records since it lasted 58 hours, 35 minutes, and 58 seconds. This is an overly non-standard and radical way to lose weight, but the very presence of such a record proves once again that kissing has a special place in the history of mankind. I wonder if the Thai couple also kissed with their eyes closed for the whole 58 hours.